Hello and welcome to this tutorial on TCP Modbus communication with Arduino Opta. We will learn today how to do communication using the Arduino Opta as a master and then we will use a PC as a slave device. We will learn four operations. We will show how to send a boolean variable from the master to the slave. We will learn how to read a boolean variable on the slave. We will learn how to send an unsigned integer from the master to the slave. And finally, we will learn how to read an unsigned integer from the slave. We are going to start with the coil read and write. So first of all, we are going to create a couple of uh, variables. So we go to let outputs two and three. And we're going to create a variable for the button. Okay. Now we are going to uh, First of all, we're going to start, to start with the read coil. So what we're going to do is to read the coil number two of the slave, and we're going to write that into the lead number two of the master, in this case, the opta. So for that, we are going to create a new program. It's gonna be another diagram in fast. And we're gonna start uh, by creating the read uh, on Ethernet. So we create, we configure it as a master. We add the device, which is gonna be a PC. We will set the IP later. So for now, I'm gonna write this, but we will set the configuration later. And now we're going to add the coil that we're going to read. We need to enter the address of the coil that we're going to read in the slave. In this case, we are going to say that it's address number three. It's uh, half a second. And we create the variable, which is uh, read coil address three. Okay. Now we can go back to the other diagram and we are going to enter this variable into our LED number three. So what's going to happen here is that we're going to read the coil on the uh, slave and it will be written into an Arduino's Optas LED three. What we're going to do now is to write the state of the push button into coil number four and also into the into a LED. So for that, uh, we're going to actually create LED4. So normally what we would do is to create a new network. We're gonna read the state of the push button and we're gonna light the LED4 so that we know that we're doing it correctly. And also we need another variable for Modbus communication. So we go back to Modbus and we add here what's gonna be a right single coil. And we're gonna need the address. So we're going to write it into address number four of the slave. Again, it's half a second. And this variable is gonna be called button state send. Okay, now we go here, we add a new coil and we are going also, we're going to also send the button state. Okay, so for this we are ready. We will now read and write integers. So for that we are going to go here and we're going to add a read holding register function. Um, we must enter the address of the register that we're going to read. 
So we're gonna choose 2110 each half a second. And we're gonna create a new variable in order to store the info that we read that we read. So read read information. Okay. And also what so what we're going to do here is that we're going to read the number that is stored in this register, we are gonna add to it a number and then we are gonna send it back to the slave. So we create another function, write single register, and here, so if here it was 2110, here's gonna be 2111, and we are gonna call it written register okay now we must implement this function so we go to project we're gonna create a new functional block diagram in fast and here we're gonna perform the operation now we're going to perform the addition so we take the operator add, we pick the variable, which was called red information. We are going to add a constant, for example, 1000. And we're going to send it back through the other variable. <coughs> Return register. Okay, flip it, and that's ready to go. In order to set up communications, we must go here and we go to the math bus, and here we are going to write the PC because that's the the device that we are going to be controlling as a slave. Here in IP address, we must type the IP of the slave. In our case, to find out the address of our computer, we go to CMD and we type ipconfig. And here we can see this address 169.254.177.216. So we type that into this space. Then we choose the Modbus address, which must be between 1 and 247. And that identifies our slave. Here we can write uh, whatever, so 20 for example. And then finally we go to Sketch. And we here we set up the static IP of the master of the Arduino Opta. In our case, here what they have done is I've taken you must respect the first three sets of numbers and then you can choose the last one so the computer the slave was 216 here the master will be 80 and with that we have the communication set up now we can compile and test to finalize we are going to perform a demonstration of the communication we have set up the Arduino Opta as the master and the computer as the slave. And what we have physically is the computer and the Arduino connected through a switch through Ethernet cables. So let's show the communication. For that we're going to use this tool which is called PY Mod Slave. It creates a slave device. So now we will use the Arduino as the master and the computer as the slave. In options, we have to set up in this tool the IP address of the slave that we're going to create. This was the IP of the computer itself. And in the unit ID, we set it as 20. That's what we have set up here, if you remember, on the PC identifier here. Okay, so now we are going to connect the slave. And it looks good because packets are being transmitted, so there is communication. So now let's test the functionality. First of all, 
the reading of boolean values. So what we have here is uh, that in the in the address number three, the state of the address number three will be written on let three. So right now it's zero, but if here we write one, you can see that the Arduino light has turned on. So what's happening here is that the Arduino is asking the slave device, which is the computer, hey, what's the value of this address? It's telling one, and then it's executing the function and lighting the LED. If we write zero again, then it will turn off. Next, user button will be written into LED4 and another address whose direction, if you remember, was the address number four. So if we press the button here, you can see that the LED turns on and that the address number four becomes one. If we release, it turns off and the address becomes zero. As for the transfer of uh, integers, for that we can see, we can remember the function that we have programmed. So uh, um, here you are reading and writing holding registers. So we go to holding registers and what we're going to doing here is reading a certain address. We are adding a thousand and writing it back. If you remember, the address that we're reading and writing have this number. So we have to search them and that's why the index is uh, starts about here. So for example, if I show it, okay. If we write here, I don't know, uh, 254, press enter, what's happening here is that uh, the, the master device, which is the Arduino, is reading the information on the slave device, on this address, 254, it reads it, it, it this information is sent from the slave to the master, the master performs its addition and it writes it in the address of the slave, which is the next one, and that's here. So we can see that this uh, is uh, both taking and sending integer values.